Hello and welcome to Sri Lanka 99.9 for Cricket Every Day. Uh, my name is Mark Machado from the Murali End and I'm joined as always by Stalvazi Devon from the Papare. Sri Lanka 99.9 for is your new home for Sri Lanka content and we'll be dropping into your podcast feed on YouTube or on the 99.9 for app several times a week. If you haven't already, please do rate, review and if this is your first time discovering us, please do subscribe. We're only six days away now, actually less than that I think, from Sri Lanka's uh, campaign starting for the T20 World Cup in Australia in 2022. Today, we are going to put together, it's a bit of fun, we're putting together our all-time Sri Lanka World Cup T20 teams. This is obviously for the, from the men's side of things, not not, not the ladies' side. Um, I'm sure we'll get around to the, to the women at some point. Um, Estelle, let's start with openers. Um... We so me and you. I, I should just just to give the listeners some context. Me and you. Well, you came up with this idea about a week ago, and I I initially was like, "Yeah, that's a great idea." And then my initial thought was, "I think it'll, this team will probably pick itself." And we haven't talked about it since. There's obviously a couple. Yeah. Of, there's there's at least two players who I think are definitely in every in in everyone's side and we'll, once uh, you know when we get to them I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it but i think it's it, it this could become quite controversial potentially because i have no idea who's in your 11 and you have no idea who's in my 11 right do you want to start and let us know who you've got your opening bats batters yeah so um obviously i've got tilakarat madil shan i think for me when we talk, spoke about doing this team, that was the first name that came up. It wasn't Mahela or Malinga. I just thought of Dilshan because Dilshan's performance in the 2009 World Cup, I think, was kind of ingrained in my head. He was that good. Um, so Dilshan and the uh, the partner was a bit tough to pick because obviously Mahela made a lot of runs opening the batting in T20 cricket during that la- latter part of his career. But I've gone with Sanat Jayasurya because I can't leave him out of any of my all-time Sri Lanka teams. So yeah, Sanat and Dilshan at the top. Okay, so obviously I've got with Dilshan as well. I think he's one of the obvious picks. He's one of three, like for me, clear picks. Um, like what what can we say about Dilshan that you haven't already said? I mean, you talked about 2009. I think that's where he invented the Dil scoop, right? Um, in that tournament. I mean, I think the the, the highest accolade any cricketer can have is that there is something in the game named after you. And, you know, the the dill scoop is the dill scoop, isn't it? And we should, you know, as, as Shrunker fans, we should make sure people never forget where it came from and, and you know, remember his name forever. He was so prolific, right? When you look back on the finals that Sri Lanka lost, you know, a, a lot of the time the criticism was Sri Lanka were losing them because if you get, uh, you know, if you get him and Mahela are out early and, and Sangha are out early, then Sri Lanka don't have the experience because the other guys have just sat in the shed for the for the whole tournament um and, and haven't battered recently. Then and I think that's a fair a fair comment almost. Um and then my other opener, I went for Kissel Pereira. Um just only because okay. only because I think T like <sighs> I love Salah Jaisuria and I feel like so bad that I'm having to apologise to, well, I feel like I'm doing it to him. I feel like I've offended him and I hope he's not, I hope if he ever does come across this, he, he's he's not offended. But I just think that by the time T20 cricket kicked on, I know you played in the, I think the first couple of iterations of the tournament, I, I just think we'd probably seen the best of him. The other thing I will say though is I just don't think we have T20 cricket if it wasn't for, for him in the 90s and, and in the early part of, of this millennium tearing it all up um and you know he's he's a great player he's been a great servant of the game for Sri Lanka I love him so much and now you've made me feel incredibly bad that I haven't picked him I just think <laughs> there's two things with Chris Pereira I think he's, he, he he was there in 2014 when we won it and he's just been at more tournaments for us so I mean he's going to miss this year's tournament because he's injured I suspect if you know if he hadn't He's he's had a bit of a bad run in the last twelve months, right? Where he had COVID and then he got a sh- shoulder injury. We haven't seen him play since the last World Cup, I think. Um, but you know, it totally wouldn't surprise me if he was in the squad in two years' time. 
Um, and, ma- and maybe he, he's the player we need. And also, in a way, you, you know, he talks about his admiration of, of, of Sanath a lot, talks about the fact that he bats left-handed because of him. Um, so in a way, picking picking him is kind of like picking Sanath Jaisaru. Is that <laughs> fair? Am I talking myself into this? Um, do you want to tell us who your middle order, order bat, uh, batsman are? Yeah, uh, so I picked Mahela at three. That's the closest I could get him to opening. Obviously, the only guy with more than a uh, thousand runs um, at the T20 World Cup. So you have to pick him somewhere. Slotted him at three and he'll be captain, of course. And then I do not have, I don't have uh, Kuma Sangakara in this side. So I'm going for two new guys. They've played one tournament each. So Chari Asalanka and Banuka Rajapaksha at four and five. I guess uh, you could switch Asalanka and Mahela around, bet Asalanka at three and Mahela at five. I just feel like, I mean, I, I made this tournament hypothetically thinking they're playing in Australia, right? So I feel like just the impact those two guys would have uh, as opposed to Sangha who probably had his best tournaments in um, kind of different conditions. Yeah. Again, I feel like you felt about Sanat, but no Sangakara. Dilshan will keep. Uh, Asalanka, Jayavadhan, and Rajapaksha at 3-4-5. My 3-4-5, um, and again, this is a thing, I think the three of them will have to get together and decide who bats where. Um, but I'd put Asalanka at 3 I put Mahela at four and Kumar at five. Um, I just think Aslanka gets in because it felt to me like we have been a a batsman short and he was the one who's, who got the most amount of runs last year. It's interesting because going into this year's tournament where he's, you know, he's, he's nowhere near his prime yet, but he's a year older. And there's, you know, me and you have been discussing him whether or not he even makes the 11, right? Um, I think Mahela, you said you said everything that needs to be said. Needs the captain the side. Um, he's our all-time top run scorer at the, this tournament. And then we talk about Kumar. Well, for me, they come as a package, right? Um, <laughs> I I I kind of can I can kind of understand why you might look at another player. And obviously, going into this tournament, especially the way the Asia Cup ended, there's a lot of. Um, expectation on Barnaka Rajapaksa but for me just Barnaka he, he might make, he's one of those players who I think should be you know hopefully he, he might see these 11s and go I need to be making that list and maybe at the end of this tournament we have a serious discussion about whether or not he makes my team he's obviously made your team already um, but I just think he needs to be a little bit more consistent or just needs to do it for a little bit longer right um He's had a good. He's had a good year. Can he have a good two, two, three, four more years for Sri Lanka? Can he have you know go to this tournament and really pick up a huge amount of runs? Um, and if he does that, then I think he's in, in serious contention. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because of, probably off of my eleven, I think Kumar Sankara is probably the, the the one player who is the least at home in this format. And obviously, as he you know gets towards the back end of his career, it just all becomes about test matches for him, right? He does he kind of doesn't care about about anything else. So I can understand why why you might not have picked him, but I know there's, there's no debate about whether or not he's an all time great. It's about whether or not he makes this side. I just think he was so consistent for so long. He's got to be in this team, right? Um, should we take a quick break? But after that, we'll look at our all rounders that we're going to put into the into the side where I think, again, there might be a little bit more up for discussion. You're listening to Cricket's Conversation on 99.94. Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube, or on the 99.94 app. We have India, England, South Africa, West Indies, and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994DM by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. Um, so Estelle, uh, we, we've talked about our openers and we've talked about our, um, our middle order batsmen. What I want to know is who is coming in 
at six, seven, and eight for you, which three all rounders have you picked um, for for this for your all time Sri Lanka T twenty eleven? Yeah, so that is kind of a uh, picking Bangkur Rajapaksha was tough. If I didn't have him in the side, I would probably push Angelo Matthews to number five and then have Tisara Pereira and Vanidu Hasaranga at six and seven. But now I pick Bhanu Rajapaksha at five. So Matthews is, I think, one of the clear picks. Um, he's had a fantastic kind of run in, in with both bat and ball. Of course, I, I don't know. I'm sure many of the people watching this or listening to this will remember that kind of fielding effort that was way be- before its time, the boundary saving effort. I think it was against New Zealand. Incredible uh, fielding. And he's, he's had, I think the Angelo Matthews that we see now is so different from the guy who kind of played in that uh, 2009 to 2015 era. In limited overs cricket, he was such a big asset, similar to what Jayasurya was in the late 90s and early 2000s with the ball. He could open the bowling. He could bowl in the depth. He could bowl in the middle with the bat. Just such a dangerous kind of finisher. So Matthews definitely at six. I've got Hasaranga at seven. He had a really good tournament last time. So I've got three new guys. Three guys with only one tournament under their belt. So Hasaranga at seven. Uh, Obviously, he's fantastic with the ball. He was the highest we could take a last time around. Um, But with the bat, I feel like Similar to what he will have to do in this tournament, he would have a big role to pay, play if he's coming in at number, number seven instead of someone like Tisara Pereira, who did have some really good performances as well in the previous tournament. So six, six and seven would be Matthews and Hasaranga. Okay, so my six and seven is exactly the same as well. Um, like I, I want Prime Matthews, right? Do you remember when he burst and when he came into the side? Was it two thousand and nine? Yeah. His first tournament, and he was as good at, at bowling as he was batting. I mean, at some stage, hopefully not for a, like I say, hopefully not for a little while because I want it to be after he's retired. And I still think Matthews has a few more really good years of cricket left in him. Um, I, I'd like there to for him to either write a book or to have a, a long few hour a sit down interview for a few hours. Um, and talk his, through his career because there's so many moments in his career where you're like, oh, he's going to push on and be one of the greatest now. Like w- when when he bursts in the scene and you're like, this guy can bat and bowl as good as anyone, right? And then, you know, due to injuries, he basically doesn't bowl anymore, right? He might get the odd over here or there. Um, and his, his career, I, th- I feel, and maybe it's just because I'm a big fan of his, um, that injuries have taken his toll probably on on him more than any other, you know, not not more than any other player. Obviously, there's, there's players whose careers have come to an end, but it, it, you can almost feel the scars of the injuries that he's had as he, as it, you know, every time you see him play, it, it feels quite tragic. And then Hasaranga, I mean, like, he's he's the great new hope for us, isn't he? Um, he had one tournament last year. I think he got 16 wickets. Um, me and you basically spend as much time as we possibly can in this podcast trying to advocate and batting further up the order that you wanted to bat for. I'm like, just open the batting with him, get it done with, open the batting with him, let him bowl every, the first over after the power play. Like he's a, he's a, he's our match winning player. Um, he's becoming more and more influential in in every franchise team he goes and joins. That T10 league when he played that in Abu Dhabi last. Yeah, he seemed to get about eight wickets every time he played. It was, um, he's, he's just incredible, isn't it? We we love him and long may it continue. And again, I think I've only got two players who've only played one, you know, who, who are still playing and have only played one tournament. He's he's my other player. Um, so um, I'm excited to see what, what he does. I will tell you who my number eight is as well, because I've got Tissera Pereira in at number eight. Um mm-hmm. For me, he's that kind of big hitter. If if I think maybe, uh, you know, w- when this team come together, and also remember, I'm talking about all of these players in their prime, not now, um, that they might re- reorder the the positions that they, they end up batting in. But I just think he was, he was so good for SL, um, either coming in and trying to get, you know, hit, a, a, you know, a, get a few sixes off the last three overs, as many, score as many runs as he can. He actually had an attitude 
or we, when he came in, I don't know if it was his attitude or, or that, you know, the attitude he was told to have, but he adopts an attitude that is quite current for the way T20 is played now, where yeah. it was, it doesn't matter if he loses his wicket, he just wants to get a high strike rate. And I always I always felt he never really let Schlunker down with, with, with the ball as well. Um, it was pretty consistent. Um, he's... He's kind of like a Barna Karajapaksa in a way because he, he he has a skill set that no one else really had in terms of being able to whack the ball about lower lower down and could you know you get a few decent overs from him and he he, he brought balance to to the side right um, and again I suppose like Angela Matthews for me I think he kind of had a a, a bit of a frustrating career I also think when yeah. some of the the senior players retired post. 2014 I think he was one of the players who for a few years was actually kind like pretty much better than we gave him credit for and was making bad losses slightly more acceptable losses but still not great um, yeah I think he's he's one who it's really tough to leave out of a team like this because you know what he's capable of and I know people always look at numbers and averages and stuff like that but I guess in his position where he's batting, your average is not necessarily going to reflect reflect the kind of impact you can have. And even in that 2014 final, I know like he wasn't the top scorer and people think by the time he, he came in, uh, matches already won. But I, I think he had a massive impact in that chase and he really gave Sangakara the kind of freedom to continue in, in his with his style of play until we got to the target. So, so, so yeah. Also, the other thing is, is when you talk to players who are playing, is they aren't that interested in averages or, you know, what, what their recent form is, what they're interested in, particularly in, for, in smaller formats, seems to be is what the player can do, right? So they don't mm -hmm. care that, yep. you know, Aaron Finch hasn't hit, a, you know, a 50 or a century in X amount of time, hasn't got a big score. They're more worried about we'd get him out because we know he's capable of a big score, and I think that's kind of what Tishra Pereira brought to that side, right? Um, and also, I think to a degree with the same with Angela Matthews as well. Is they weren't given a huge amount of batting time. They never had the, like for for most of their tournaments yeah. that they were involved in, they never really had to save Sri Lanka until it came to like the final <laughs> or you know a, a semi final or, or a, a key knockout game, and it's like all right. These guys haven't batted for like days now, for weeks. Um, and now suddenly we need their help. Um, so I kind of have a little mm. bit more sympathy to it. Let's take another quick break. And after that, let's get into our final, well, your final four players, my final three players. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 9994DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. Um, so Estelle, you've picked your, your top seven. We're, we're, we're looking at your bowlers now. Do you want to go on and finish? Tell us who, you, who, you, who finishes your 11. Yeah, so I've picked two frontline spinners and two paces, despite having the options of Dilshan and Sanat in the, at the top of the order who can also contribute some uh, spin bowling. So I've got Herat, uh, Ajanta Mendis, Nuan Kulasekara, and Lasit Malinga as my four bowlers. Uh, was kind of wanting to pick one between Herat and Mendis because of the whole spin bowling thing. But it's difficult to kind of leave. Hera, I mean, you can't go past that five for three, right? Against New Zealand. It came in such a high pressure situation. And again, if you look at his overall stats, he may not have the best, uh, you know, the most number of wickets or best strike rate or best average or whatever. But it's just like you mentioned, you, you want players who you know can put in a performance like that, who can give you a big... Um, performance. So that's why I kind of went with Herat and Ajanta Mendis. Left arm spin and mystery spin and then you've got the leg spin of uh, Vanidu Hasaranga as well. I think be a pretty <laughs> tough bowling attack to get past and of course 
Lasit Maling is a no-brainer. You have to pick one of the world's greatest ever um, T20 bowlers. And Kulasekar purely, again, one, that one performance against India in that final. I, f- I feel like, like you said, Sangakara and Mahela kind of a, like a package deal, right? Um, similarly, I think Malinga and Kulasekara just do so well together because often Malinga gets a lot of credit and, and, and rightly so. I mean, he's, he's such a fantastic bowler, uh, particularly at the death. But that role that Kulasekara plays on the other end can't be understated because he provides that support that Malinga needs to kind of go about his business. Uh, can hit, hit, hit a long ball as well. So Kulasekara probably bats ahead of Herat at number eight. Um, yeah, so that's my 11. So my final three are obviously Malinga. He's, he's, I think he's the best T20 bowler of all time at this point, right? And I think, you know, the way he ends his IPL career, which I think for most people is, is the end of his career. I know he played a little bit afterwards. Um, just sums it all up, right? Um, and then, as you say, I think you've got to place Kulasekra. I think he's, our, he's been our second best scene bowler in in the format after Malenga. Um, and as you know, as you say, package deal. I think they played together since they were children, right? They're basically from the same place, mm-hmm. aren't they? I've gone with Ajanta, Ajanta Mendes as my kind of number 11, as my third bowler. I've only got three bowlers because I picked Tisra Pereira as well. Uh, I, I thought about Heroth, but I just think Mendes, when he, he, he shone for a shorter time than most of our spinners do, but he shone so brightly. And he was much more for handful at, at T20 than uh, than Herath was. I think overall, obviously, you know, you, you can look at some performances in Rangana's career and go, how could you drop him for that? Um, but I just thought Mendes was, for a short period of time, he was an absolute handful. I remember the first, after his after his debut game, he got a big write-up in, in the Times of, well, the Times of London. Uh, well, I just call the Times because I'm in London. Uh, um, and I was like, and they they written him up as the, the heir to Murley, obviously, and um, just for a Sri Lankan player to play to get written up in a British newspaper when Sri Lanka weren't playing against England, I think was such a big deal at the time, and shows how seriously people in the cricket world stood up and took it took him it's a real shame his career didn't last longer I suppose you know that's just the kind of nature of it isn't it um so that's my 11 um so in terms of bowling I'm actually I've got the three I've just mentioned I've also got Hasaranga to to add some overs and I'm picking Prime Matthew so he he can bowl as well and Tisha Pereira can bowl so we've got we're, we're I think we've pretty much got all bases covered um I think this is a team that could win um, and, and we've got Aslanka as well. He can, he can spin, so we can have what four, eight, twelve overs of spin. Um, and Dilshan as well. He's taken wickets in T twenties. Could have sixteen overs of spin if you wanted. Um, and we've got um, <laughs> in Australia. Okay, in Australia, yeah, exactly right. Never, <laughs> not needed. Um, and we've got sixteen overs off off seam as well. So we're, I think we're, we're well covered uh, in both sides. What? Um, well, I was going to say what I'd want to know is whose team would win, but obviously they they would never play each other. We need to get one of those FIFA type games and generate all these this team with all these players in their prime and get them to play each other. Yeah, I'm pretty confident my team would win. Right, I've got Sanad Jaisal in it. <laughs> I, I, I just think my team would win. I'm just. I, I think my team. I think your team would 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 have a really high run rate for the first sixteen overs, then tail off. Well, I think we'd maintain a decent run rate all the way to all 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 twenty overs, and it would be superb. Anyone you 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 kind of didn't want to leave out but had to, or any other combinations you can think of? Well, obviously, I run a podcast called The Murley End, so the the one player I was absolutely gutted that I couldn't get into was Murley. Um, it's just in T20, he, he, he's, he's, his stats don't really work, do they? I think, it again, yeah. like Sanath, the, the format just came a little bit too late 
for them. And actually, yeah. it's that that I think they're the two players who um, it's it's a real shame Sri Lanka never had the prime in during the kind of the T Twenty era, right? Because yeah. they would have definitely made a huge. Uh, dent in the formats. I mean, do you remember, you know, when, when the IPL started, both of them were marquee players uh, for their yeah. teams, right? The whole C- CSK franchise was built around Murali. Um So, you, you know, what, these are two players who, de- who definitely, I think if, if the format started five years before it did, if it started yeah. in the late 90s, then they, I, I suspect both of them would have been no-brainers in, into the side. Um the, the um, I'm trying to think if there was anyone else. What about you? Was anyone you found difficult to? Yeah. So, like I mentioned, the whole like picking Sanat was also hard because, like you said, by the time he's, uh, by the time T Twenty cricket really came along, he he was at the like the latter stages of his career. If I was to make a change, I would maybe say, push Mahela up to open. And uh, have Asalanka at three and fit Sangha in. Yeah. Because then you have a proper, like, a uh, frontline keeper. The other player, I feel like, again, kind of, he didn't do too well in T20 World Cups. I'm not sure whether he even played, but Upul Taranga around that time was kind of fantastic with the bat just, just before the T20 World Cup or the T20 format really came along. So, Maybe a few more years here and there, he could have made this 11. But I'm pretty happy with this one. A uh, few new guys. Hopefully in Australia would have got a lot of runs. But maybe they have a chance to do it this time. Yeah, I, I, th- there's a couple of guys in the squad. I mean, you picked the Roger Parks there. I also think Patum and c- mm-hmm. could could make this. I don't think he's that far off making this team. I think if he has, an, you know, if he's consistent in this format for another year or so. Then I think he'd he'd be in the yeah. Sharnaka is the other one. I feel yeah. Like yeah, it's, uh, I, if, if Sharnaka keeps hitting runs, he's he's if he could, he's doing the job we thought Thissa Pereira was going to do right. Yeah. Um. So if he can keep doing that, then I think he can push himself into it. Thanks for listening to Sri Lanka at ninety nine point nine four Cricket. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe. Download the 99.94 app and follow us on Twitter. You can search for me, uh, Mark Machado, or you can search for Estelle Vazi Devon and we'll both pop up. We'd love to hear from you. We'll put links up for everything we do there on this podcast and beyond. And also follow the network at 99.94 DM on social media. Follow for podcasts and commentary from the bat and ball world. Thanks for joining Cricket's Conversation. Cricket's Conversation.